there are two reasons why your teenage children might laugh at what you're doing. The first is because they think you're an idiot and they can't quite believe what it is they're seeing. It's a laugh that covers embarrassment. The second is where they're about to race you on an indoor rower and even though you last sat on one 10 years before they were born, within a few seconds of your warm up, they know they're in trouble. It looks like this. It's a laugh that covers fear. Good morning and welcome to the video and a new activity for the channel, rowing. I've not been on a rowing machine in anger in about 30 years, so this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, the reason I'm rowing is because if you follow the channel uh, or watch my Instagram, you might know that I'm doing the High Rocks event at the end of January um, in Manchester. Uh, High Rocks is a, a, a combination of many events, one of which is rowing. So I figured I should probably remind myself how to use the machine. Uh, in mentioning it to my kids that I was doing this event, one of them, who's quite big and so I guess sort of suited for rowing, said, oh, I could beat you on a rowing machine. Uh, and a parenting tip uh, for you, whenever your children sort of try and step up uh, to sort of surpass you and, and, and move beyond where you are in life. Kind of Yoda and Luke thing. <laughs> no, my kids can uh, surpass me when I'm dead. Until then, they can wait. Um, so I've got that to do later. First is Park Run. I'm at Park Run. Not done Park Run since January 1st, 2020, when I did the quite, uh, for me, uh, amazing, um, I thought, 1928 or something. Uh, very quick, anyway, for me. Um, I'm not doing that today at all. Uh, three reasons I'm doing park run today. One is that uh, High Rocks includes a bit of 1K running in between the events. So you sort of do a, do a run, event, run, event. So I'm expecting my 5K time to go up. So this will be a nice sort of benchmark setting to see where my current 5K is at. Uh, secondly, me and Nixon, who's in the boot back there. Nixon! Uh, have a couple of fast 10Ks this month. And... We did a 10K the other day, and we've been doing a lot of slow training lately together because I was training for my ultramarathon, so our fast pace is not quite where it needs to be. And the third most important reason is that if my kid does beat me, I can say, well, of course you did. I just ran a park run this morning. Um, about the parenting advice that's coming, I should write a book on this. So I'm going to bounce in here with some commentary on this run. I was going to just play the footage with some classic YouTube techno dance fitness music blog type stuff over the top of it. Maybe some slow-mo. Then I gave myself a slap and came to my senses. So first of all, awesome to be back at Park Run. If you follow my journey, you'll know that the first competitive challenge that I set myself when I lost a load of weight was to just not suck at Park Run. Those Saturday morning runs were my inspiration to get healthier and healthier every week. I'd forgotten how much I loved doing them. And also, at a time when the entire world should be encouraged to get healthier, it's actually nice to see people taking some personal responsibility for how fit and resilient their bodies are. So back when I last ran here, there'd often be three or 400 people running. Today, only about 160, but still enough for a real sense of an event going on. Me and Nixon always try and stay out of everyone's way early on. There's nothing more annoying on a park run than some Muppet with a dog that gets in your way. I try not to be that person. But after the first kilometer, we settled in nicely with a group of about six or seven people. One guy had gone flying off ahead of everyone else. And we did that first kilometer in around four minutes. I was actually really surprised because as I said in the car, I'd done a lot of slow running lately, deliberately for training. And I didn't think I'd be going much above maybe four minute 30 pace, but this actually felt fine. And Nixon had no issues. So we just decided to sit here with this little gang of people. And apart from a minor issue where I got tangled up in his lead halfway around, it was pretty uneventful. This course is nice and simple. You run down the riverbank, cross a little bridge, and then basically two big laps of a giant field before going back across the bridge and back to the start. From the bridge to the finish, probably about 800 meters. So at that point, we would pick up the pace a bit and try to get after those people in front of us. Unusual for me, I wasn't really watching the time here, more focused on the people around us. My history with park run timing is that I spent a long time refusing to register my times because I was above 30 minutes by a long way. And I told myself I would never record anything that wasn't sub 30. After many, many months, I eventually got there and then slowly plodded down over the years to low 20s. And then once I started doing some serious distance running in 2019, I found that my 5K time just got better. Consequently, ran a 1928, 1st of January, 2020. And that was my last park run. Here, 
I thought I'd be around 22 minutes. But as we started picking off people in those last few hundred metres, I realised that we were going to come inside the top 10. And even without looking at my watch, I knew that meant we were going to be beating that prediction. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And so we did, first dog, obviously, first in age group, first in the heavy person group, that doesn't exist, but I always make it up anyway, and sixth place overall, 20.08, really happy with that. I kind of assumed that that 1928, around two years ago, was gonna be my pinnacle of park run performance, but now I'm not so sure. Gonna be doing some quick training runs in preparation for High Rocks, so it'll be interesting to see. Me and Nixon are gonna be doing the New Year's Day park run here, exactly two years on from the PB, and we'll see what we can get. Not sure I'll be able to go faster than that 1928, but definitely a sub 20 would be nice. It might actually start a New Year's Day tradition of running sub 20 park runs for as long as I can, or as long as Nixon can. Be interesting to see which one of us gets slow and old first. Right, after that, went home, had some breakfast, and then off to the gym. Okay, so we are off to the gym. Uh, the plan is to do a 500 meter row, because 500 meters should take somewhere around about one and a half and a bit minutes. So. It's not too strenuous, uh, but it's equally not so short that people that have zero cardio won't be impacted in some way, negatively, hopefully. So, 500 meter row. Uh, we've looked on the concept row rankings thing online and worked out what we need to do to compare favorably against other people that have rowed that distance this year, this season. So here's the thing with rankings. You go on the Concept2 website, you tap in your details, and you can see all the submitted times for this season from people in your weight category, your age group, and doing the 500 meter distance. I've no real idea how you go about getting a time on there or who those people are, but it's a list of names with times next to them, good enough for me. For the kid, around one minute 30 would have put him in the top 30-ish, and for me, around 125 is something like top 50. I haven't sat on a rower properly, since I was about 18 or 19. Back then I was reasonably quick, uh, never trained to row properly, but um, used to work in a gym with a rowing machine there and use that occasionally. Uh, me and some friends at that gym would do sort of triathlon, run, row, bike competitions against other gyms and I'd do the rowing leg and would always do all right. But around 19, 20 years, Oh, stopped all that and haven't used one since. Joshua, Joshua has an interesting rowing history. Joshua was talent spotted. I say talent, someone said, oh, he's big. And sent to Leander Rowing Club. Uh, Leander Rowing Club is basically a factory that churns out Olympic champions. And they said, wow, he's the perfect size. We'll, we'll train him to row. Uh, and then he decided that actually he would rather just what, just work out in the gym. It would kill his gains uh, if he spent all that time rowing. So he threw away an illustrious rowing career in order to do, what, curls for girls. So he's rowed a tiny bit, but nothing that serious either. But he is the right size for it, as am I, I guess. So we are two people physically suited to rowing a bit, but with not much history of doing it properly. How's that gonna go? No idea. Um, after I've done the row, I'm then gonna do my first high rocks training session in advance of my high rocks competition in the January, which is gonna consist of more rowing, I think, more rowing and some wall balls or something. I've got to look up what the training session is. Um, that's it for now. Uh, tail of the tape, six foot six, about 98 kilos today. What are you, six? Six, six, lucky, two. He's six six, but he's got about he's got about four inches of hair. So I don't think that'll help. 92. He's only 92 kilos. I'm not sure what gains he thinks he's gonna be killing. Um Yeah. Game time. Round two. Round two, because I did the park run this morning. Round one for Joshua, he hasn't done anything yet. Apart from me. What do you eat, what do you eat in preparation for today? Sausage sandwich. He had a sausage sandwich kids.
Okay, so while we're warming up here, let me just clarify the rowing experience that we have. Because I know from the video that I did on how I went from being a non-cyclist to a cyclist, that people love to spot things in the background here, little clues that don't always add up. Gee, now that's peculiar. The amount of times I had to explain to people that yes, there were bikes on the wall back there when I started cycling, but they were e-bikes. One was my wife's, one was my kids to go to school on, and the one that was mine was one that I used to go on picnics with in the summer. I was not a cyclist. What I'm expecting to happen now is that somebody will say, ah, oh, we saw a rowing machine in your garage years ago. That is true. On my early videos, you might have spotted a water row it used to be up against the wall over here. When I bought this house, there was no gym nearby. So I built a little gym in here, had no cardio option. So I bought a water rower because it looked really cool. And it was really cool. It made a lovely sloshing sound. I used it about four times and it stayed up against the wall until I sold it. I am not a rower. This is the last time I would have rowed quickly. I'm about 19 years old here. This is a photograph taken at a 24 hour record attempt row that we did. I think we actually got the world record or the UK record. We got some sort of record, but not for very long because I remember the army did it about four days later and beat us. So whatever record we had, we didn't hold on to it for too long. And even back then, I wasn't a rower as such. I never rowed on the water in my life. Uh, I just used to basically use the concept rower in the gym that I worked at and mucked about on because I was quite big, I was quite quick. And so when these little competitions would come up locally, I'd go along and have a play. Since then, everything I've done on a rowing machine is probably maybe five or six times, literally in all those years in between, I've sat on one to do a warm up for whatever I'm gonna be doing in the gym. But as you'll know if you watch my channel, warm-ups are not really my thing either. As for Joshua, he had a couple of months at Leander before Covid got in the way and he didn't go back. He's never rode on the water either. He's done maybe 10 sessions on land. By any sensible standard, neither of us are rowers. And on the other side of that coin, if our technique is appalling here, we don't care. We're not rowers. Stick it in the comments if you like, but don't expect me to pay much attention to any of it. Right, Josh is off. In case you've never used a row machine, the most commonly used way of establishing how fast you're going is on your 500 meter split time. So the display will constantly show what time you would do 500 meters in if you keep rowing at that exact pace for long enough. Obviously, because we are doing 500 meters, it's a pretty relevant time. And Josh's was showing just under one minute 30 from the start, which actually was a bit faster than I thought. But could he keep it going? Now, 500 meters is fun because it's clearly not a long endurance event, but equally it's long enough to quickly blast through all your creatine phosphate stores in your muscles and then move on to your anaerobic lactate system, which will give you energy for around another 90 seconds or so. It doesn't require oxygen, so it's not aerobic, but it does have the downside of generating lactic acid buildup, so it does hurt. After that, you're into aerobic exercise and you have to adopt a much slower rate accordingly. You don't really want that happening with 20 or 30 seconds to go, but there is an inevitable drop off in performance. At the end, his pace was slipping past 130 into 132, 133. I thought he was gonna flag completely and end up with a time the wrong side of 130 overall. <laughs> Man, that's fast. Kind of a bit worried now. But he gets 130 dead. And I was genuinely worried that I might not be able to beat that. For someone who does zero cardio, he hasn't rode since those few sessions before COVID and was fueled by a couple of sausages. I was moderately impressed. Okay, so my go. Important stuff. If you're wondering why I'm wearing pink cycling socks, it was so that if I beat him, I could say, and I was wearing pink cycling socks. No other reason. I'm also using his earbud Dr. Dre beats things because I was so worried that I might not be able to beat him. I was listening to some Rocky IV, which we'd had queued up and ready to go. But then when I started rowing, I'd forgotten to push the little button thing to make it play. So at this point, I'm literally singing in my head, hearts on fire while I'm doing this. The problem with 500 meter rows is it's actually quite hard to find just regular people times. So I've no idea how our times compare really. Obviously the people on the rankings are keen rowers and they've done those times under verification rules or races, most of them. And looking online on YouTube, I can find lots of videos of elite rowers destroying the 500 meters, but none of normal people. Obviously there are thousands of people using Concept2 rowers in gyms every day, but very few of them are banging out 500 meter sprints and then noting the time. So there isn't a sort of park run equivalent where you can see what regular folk can do and then place yourself amongst that. You have to compare against these fast times. Got him. <laughs> 
124.2. I started off around 118s, 119s, and drifted, as you can see on the screen there, towards the end, 129 I finished up on. Hard bloody work. And because I've only done one and a half minutes work, I thought I'd then better do something else. So I did some wall balls, which were an event in the High Rocks competition that I'd never done before. So I thought I should probably practice those before going home. That was a fun little session. Uh, Joshua went home after the rowing. He was done. Uh, I stayed and did those wall balls. And man, they are harder than I thought. When I saw them as an exercise listed for High Rocks, I thought that the squat part would be the tough bit for me, having to squat with long legs, a long way to go down. And that the ball throwing part would be easier because I'm further to the target and therefore less distance to throw the ball. And obviously the ball is a lower percentage of weight relative to my body. But the squats weren't too bad. The burn in the shoulders was crazy. And obviously at High Rocks, that's the last event. Uh, so you're already exhausted when you get to it. So that was, yeah, that was tougher. I'm using a 10 kilo ball instead of a seven kilo ball. So that when I do get to use a seven kilo ball, it won't feel so heavy. But even so, much, much tougher than I thought. Um, and the row, yeah, the row was good. Uh, the kid was faster than I thought he'd be. I was gonna guess something like 135 for him. So to get 130 dead, was uh was impressive very impressive and he was slipping towards the end so very cool that he held on uh yeah faster than i thought 130 uh despite size for someone that doesn't row to just jump on it and uh bang out that it's no mean feat so yeah kid did good uh not as fast as me obviously um but, <laughs> but actually at that rate he may surpass me before i'm dead uh, my hope is that he does what i did and gets to about 22 when he'll be catching me perhaps and then just balloons in weight and gets really fat and spends 20 years being out of shape in which case i'm safe again results so that 124 puts me 36 out of 881 on the concept 2 rankings for this season josh's 130 puts him at 24 out of 146 so we're both above average he said his target is to try and get sub 130 mine is to stay sub 130 as i move towards old age Possibly at some point, we may cross paths, the pupil beating the master, and I dread that day. I would have been a very, very bad Yoda. Okay, hope you found it interesting, and if a parent yourself, then you've picked up some free and amazing parenting tips. You're welcome. Please like and subscribe, and all that remains for me to do is to answer the one question that I know you will all be asking. No, you couldn't buy a vest like that in the shops. I had to make that myself.